with fundraising. They are wonderful. They are and that's what happens. Shaitan, you know, gets into the mind, especially of young people. You know, and there are people out there selling what we call wolf tickets. You know, trying to trap people, telling them, yeah, you know, Afghanistan, Iraq, get out there. We got to do something. You know, <laughs> here, what you going to do here? You know. But there are people offering this. It's a shortcut. It's a shortcut. To set up that Muslim school is a tough journey, something you really got to work for. The other one where you think you're doing something, just make a bomb, you know, <laughs> blow up something, you know. It's quick, it's easy, it's short. You don't have to make any sacrifice, any effort. You know, you just get some guys together. It's nonsense. This is shaitan. Shaitan puts this into the minds of the youth because we want a quick fix. This is the nature, right? We want something done quickly. We want to correct the situation right now. But reality is that when the Prophet ﷺ said, you know, whoever sees an evil should change it with their hands, this is for those who are actually in a position to change that situation. Not for people who are not in the position to just try to do something. You're not in the position to do so. Means that the consequences, there are going to be consequences from your actions that are far worse than the good you thought you were going to do with that action. So the key is that, you know, commanding the good is in accordance with your ability to do it, and that's where you are now responsible. If you're able to command the good with your hand and correct that thing, stop it, whatever, but you only speak about it, okay, then you are, you're in trouble because you didn't do it on the level you should. But where all you can do is speak, well, then that's, you speak, right? So if there is a wrong there, of course, you write the article, you know, you speak out, you know, distribute material, people are aware, but where do you focus your, your energy? In the area that you can actually make that change. So that would be my advice. You know that we need to focus on building the necessary uh, components, structures for a Muslim community here. You know, to realistically develop a Muslim community which has all of its components, you know, which is based on Islam, not based on ethnicity. You know, we're all in this area because we're all Guyanese or we're all Egyptians or we're all Pakistanis, you know. No. We have too much of that. I mean, we've brought it from the old world, you know, into the new world. And it's, of course, not going to help us. We have to break down those barriers and work together, you know, as Muslims without any concern or care for ethnical backgrounds because we have to do it for the sake of Allah. And to do it for the sake of Allah means we have to ignore these uh, other issues which continue to divide the Muslim world and harm the Muslim world. Allah has put us in a unique situation here in that we have, we're, we're in contact with each other on a level that the rest of the Muslim world is rarely you see them in that same kind of contact. You know, Allah, this is a special blessing from Allah in that sense. There's a lot we can do to break down the barriers and be an example to the rest of the Muslim world. Inshallah, uh, I think we'll stop here. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Nashadu wa la ilaha la ant. Astaghfiruka wa tubu laik. And I uh, would like to thank you all for coming and uh, participating in the program this evening. And we pray that Allah uh, bless your efforts and we ask you to keep us in your dua. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.